Hi friends, so welcome back to the NCRT explainer series. So we have already completed class 6, 7 and 8 history NCRTs. Now uh, we are going to discuss class 12 NCRTs which are uh, basically three parts to this uh, history that is ancient, medieval and modern history of India. In class 11 what we will learn is the world history that is for the mains exam purpose. So uh, presently we will discuss about class 12 NCRTs. So there are three textbooks one, one each on uh, ancient, medieval and modern. And in every textbook the units have been mentioned as themes. So why this is important? Understanding each theme is relevant for the UPSC exam because themes are the broader areas from which UPSC asks questions every year for both prelims and mains. For example, in the ancient history part, the first theme is Harappan civilization. Okay, so every year you can expect one question at least from this area yeah, from prelims and mains as well. So uh, you have to understand uh, or learn what all are the themes discussed in NCRT and these are the broader areas from which UPSC asks questions. So you don't have to uh, go for other uh, areas or other specific areas. You just need to have this uh, themes in your mind when you prepare. So let's move on to our discussion. So the first theme in ancient history book is bricks, beads and bones and this talks about the Harappan civilization. So we have learned something about it in the classics NCRT. So in this chapter we will dug deeper and we will get more detailed information. So that is the difference. The whole framework we have uh, discussed like what are the features of the civilization and what was the social system, what was the, the settlement, settlements like and how the civilization came to an end. So these are the broader way in which we will discuss in this lecture as well. But there are uh, additional content. Okay, that's the only difference. Uh, so if you have already watched the classics video, so you won't be you you won't uh, it won't be a difficult thing for you to learn this chapter as well. So the first thing that is mentioned here is the uh, Harappan seal. Okay, it starts with Harappan seal because it is the most di distinctive artifact of the Harappan or Indus Valley civilization. So it is made of a stone called steatite. And these uh, these seals often contain animal motifs and signs from a script that still remains undeciphered. So this is a point of contention because recently in 2019-20 budget, uh, Finance Minister Nir Nirmala Sidharaman has mentioned that the script has been deciphered. So there was a controversy regarding this. So this point or this aspect of Indus Valley Civilization can be a MCQ in prelims. So, we, uh, so the consensus among academicians is that the script has not been deciphered yet. So that is the correct position. So you need to be aware of these kind of uh, current developments and link whatever you learn in history with current developments so that there is a probability of asking it in the prelims. So we uh, we are yet to decipher the script and this uh, chapter talks about what we know and how we know about it. These are the two sections that will be dealt in this chapter. So the next column discuss about uh, Indus Valley civilization and its a uh, timeline that we are referring to. So there are uh, three stages of civilization that is early Harappan, mature Harappan and uh, late Harappan. So mature Harappan stage is when it act, the culture actually flourished and the time period mentioned here is uh, BC 2600 to 1900. So, a uh, time period of 700 years is the mature Harappan stage. So, this is when the Harappan culture flourished. Uh, moving on to the next page, the map shows different Harappan, uh, uh, Harappan sites. Important ones uh, being Lothal is there, then Dolavira, 
ചന്ദുഹാരോ മോഹൻജദാരോ സോ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് രാഖി ഗാർഹി ഈസ് ദയർ ബനാവലി കാലി ബംഗാൾ എക്സെട്രാ so these are the important area so it's basically these sites lie to the uh, northwest part of present day india so this is the area that we are or the geography we are uh, referring to so this is a arid or semi arid region so you can learn something about geography whenever you learn something in history always link it with the geography so because geography play play an important role in shaping human uh, social lives and these are the important mature harappan states now before the mature harappan stage the settlements were generally small and virtually no large buildings but coming to the mature harappan stage uh, the culture developed uh, and uh, it shared certain common elements including the subsistence strategies for example harappans ate a wide range of plant and animal products including fish so that means uh, non vegetarianism was a common thing the idea of vegetarianism and the purity pollution thing emerged only later so initially if we go by history non vegetarianism was a common thing for a uh, man to do or a woman to do okay archaeologists have been able to reconstruct dietary practices and uh, important grains used by harappans include wheat barley lentil chickpea and sesame so uh, finds of rice are relatively rare uh, and an statement can be made whether rice was a major crop or not so rice was not a major crop because there are no evidence to claim uh, uh, to have such a claim now which are the animals domesticated it mentions about cattle sheep goat buffalo and pig please note that there is no mention of dog here so this can be another aspect uh, which can be constructed as a an mcq question now coming to agricultural technologies Uh, that were used by harappans we can see the evidence of uh, plow because uh, the evidence of a plowed field at kalibangan was found okay uh, we mention many uh, discoveries related with harappan civilization so you can make a list of these discoveries and the sites from which it was uh, found or sites in which these were found this separate list can be made as part of the prelims preparation uh, and the agriculture fields also had evidence of intercropping or mixed cropping why because the field had two sets of furrows at right angles to each other suggesting that two different crops were grown together so uh, this was the approach of harappans towards agriculture they wanted to have maximum productivity with their efforts so they were an evolved culture and uh, what were the use of metals even though uh, it was bronze age so bronze was made from copper and tin so iron was not in use then iron emerged later during the uh, indus uh, the gangetic valley expansion most harappan sites are located in semi arid land so it required irrigation facilities to uh, to access water so traces of canals have been found at harappan site of shore tugai okay shore tugai is in modern day afghanistan so again this can be added to the list uh, i suggested then it is also likely that water drawn from wells was used for irrigation besides water reservoirs found in dolavira may have been used to store water for agriculture so these are certain copper tools so no iron because it was a bronze age uh, then uh, side on the side you can see the reservoir at dolavira then these are saddle quern which were used to grind uh, cereals now coming to the 
planning involved in the urban centers we will discuss about the features of mohenjo-daro and even though harappa was the first site to be discovered because but its major portions were destroyed be, uh, before it was discovered so the mohenjo-daro is the one which can be studied extensively and a and a map uh, showing or the town planning is shown here you have uh, two parts the first one is citadel and the next one lower town so citadel is a smaller part which is located on a higher plane when compared to lower town so citadel is located to the west of the uh, this is north south west and east so citadel is to the west and lower town to the east and citadel is the smaller part of the town and lower town was the larger one so there was a differentiation or uh, there was a clear structure to the town the unique feature about harappan civilization was the development of urban centers so this is the uh, first urbanization in indian history okay second urbanization is seen in the gangetic valley later with the vedic age so this was the first urbanization uh, we don't have any more evidence of urbanization before harappan so this can be considered as the first urbanization in indian history the settlement is divided into two sections one smaller but higher and the other much larger uh, larger but lower archaeologists de designate these sites as citadel and the lower town respectively the citadel owes its height to the fact that buildings were constructed on mud brick platforms so first the platforms were built and over which these buildings were built so uh, which meant that it was physically separated from the lower town that is it is it was walled citadel was walled and the lower town was also walled the lower town was also walled several buildings were built on platforms so uh, what was the uh, planning involved in construction of the city it seems that the settlements were first planned and then implemented accordingly other signs of planning include bricks Uh, whether sun dried or baked were of standard ratio okay bricks were of standard ratio so these were used at all harappan settlements then another important feature is the carefully planned drainage system all uh, roads and streets were laid out along an approximate grid pattern intersecting at right angles and streets with uh, drains were laid out first and then houses were built along with them so this was the approach so this is the image of uh, drainage in mohenjodaro look at the height involved okay almost 6 feet height uh, so they were large enough to carry enough uh, waste then citadels uh, it mentions about the variation of citadels across different harappan sites for example at sites such as dolavira and lothal and their settlement was fortified uh, actually they fortify citadel and uh, there is lower town this is also fortified but uh, in dolavira and lothal entire settlement was fortified okay and section within town were also separated by walls the citadel within lothal was not walled off okay so citadel within lothal was not walled off then coming to the domestic architecture of the city uh, many were centered on a courtyard with rooms on all sides okay this is this kind of uh, structure we can see in naligattu or in, uh, in we might have seen this kind of structure in tamil movies okay in the courtyard they may do the work uh, uh, or just think about the swadesh movie and the the house in which shahrukh khan comes so this has So, so this kind of structure is still there so it shows the cultural continuity we have starting from the harappan civilization to the present day india we can see this kind of cultural continuity so what is uh, also interesting is an apparent concern for privacy 
okay because there are no windows in the walls along the ground level so just think about the argument that uh, privacy is an elitist concern so this has been an argument regarding the other debate that uh, pri uh, the general people or the poor people are not concerned with the uh, the right to privacy but from history what we can learn is even the harappan society had concerns for privacy so it is natural for it is a natural right of every individual to have the right to privacy so you can uh, link what you read in history with every other aspects of current developments so this is what i wanted to demonstrate it with this example okay uh, every house had its own bathroom paved with bricks okay with drains connected to the wall of the street drains so there was this notion of hygiene or sanitation which we lack today uh, many houses had wells also so there was access access to water as well often in a room that could be reached from the outside perhaps used by passers by so uh, and it also mentions about staircases to reach the second story so what observation we can make that harappan civilizations had multi storied building okay it was not single storied then drainage system were not unique to the larger cities but were found in smaller settlements as well so it was a common feature so we have seen a another common feature that all bricks were of uniform ratio and here also the drainage system was extensive and it was present in the smaller settlements as well now coming to the citadel citadel houses two structures that is a warehouse and great bath so great bath we have learned in class 6 so it is found in mohanjodaro always remember that great bath was found in mohanjodaro not harappa so it was a rectangular tank in a courtyard surrounded by the corridor on all four sides so you can learn more description from the this part you can read on your own so Uh, it was meant for some kind of special ritual bath it is believed so now tracking the social difference what kind of a society in this valley had uh, the uh, the archaeologists study two things one is by studying burials and studying artifacts from these two sources they will get some idea of the society they had at burials in harappan sites the dead were generally laid in pits sometimes there were differences in the way the burial pit was made for example uh, the hollowed out spaces were lined with bricks some graves contain pottery and ornaments uh, it may be indicating the belief that these could be used in the uh, after life so harappans basically believed in the life after death so this is again uh, a feature of uh, present day uh indian society as well we believe in the life after death that's why we are concerned with the uh, religious rituals post the death okay then jewelry has been found in burials of both men and women so the wearing of jewelry was not restricted to women alone both men also uh, had their own jewelries but on the whole it appears that the harappans did not believe in burying precious things with the dead now another source of uh, source of for studying social differences is the use and uh, use of artifacts there were uh, two categories one is utilitarian which were of objects of daily use which were used by every people so and there were also luxuries so luxuries indicate that some were uh, rich enough to had those uh, kind of products so that indicates uh, inequality in terms of material possession and wealth so they are uh, the utilitarian items were usually found distributed throughout the settlements this was not the case with luxuries these were limited to important cities like harappa mohenjo daro etc so that shows the 
क्लास डिफरेंस और दी इनइक्वालिटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ वेल्थ एंड मेटीरियल पोजिशन रेयर ऑब्जेक्ट्स मेड ऑफ वैल्यूबल मेटीरियल आर जनरली कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड इन लार्ज सेटलमेंट लाइक मोहन जदारो एंड हेरपा एंड आर रेयरली फाउंड इन स्मॉलर सेटलमेंट बट यू प्लीज नोट दैट स्टिल सो फार देर इज नो मेन्शन ऑफ कास्ट इन इक्वालिटी इन द टेक्सट बुक दैट मीन्स कास्ट इन इक्वालिटी अपियड लेटर इन इंडियन हिस्टरी नोट इन दि हरपन टाइम्स finding out about craft production so it mentions about chanduharo so it was a center exclusively devoted to craft production so you can uh, keep a list of important harappan sites and its importance it can be asked as a match the following mcq then uh, it also mentions about nageshwar and balakot which were specialized centers for making shell objects okay uh, then identifying centers of production which were the centers of uh, production that you can read on your own craft production was undertaken in both the smaller settlements as well as in the large cities such as mohenjodaro and harappa so craft production was not limited to small settlements what were the strategies for procuring materials because all materials were not available within the harappan cities they had to be procured or found out from other uh, areas of the subcontinent or outside the subcontinent as well so uh, it it shows the external relationship as well the trade relationship well many stone had to be procured from outside the alluvial plain and bullock cart suggests that was it was one of the important means of transportation materials from the subcontinent and beyond include uh, uh, nageshwar and balakot because they were the established settlements then shortugay in afghanistan lothal and then uh, rajasthan and since if materials were not found from these region expeditions were conducted to have important materials like copper from khetri region of rajasthan then it was also uh, important uh, for state uh, uh, it, it was also known as the ganeshwar jodhpura culture so these are some facts associated with uh, the khetri area you just uh, memorize that's all about this paragraph now we will uh, see that the harappans also had link with oman omani sites so other than this kind of larger observation minute details are not not so important then link with mesopotamia uh, bahrain okay so you, you 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 just have the observation that indus had links with oman bahrain and those regions so other than that no such information is uh, important then it mentions about seals and sealings as well as the script okay uh, you, you just uh, read on your own there is nothing much to be discussed than the use of precise system of weights were there then the important idea is about the ancient authority the existence of uniform ratio of bricks or the settlements were strategically set up in specific location for various reasons also the labor was mobilized to construct these cities all of this indicate that there should have been a central authority to coordinate these things so many archaeologists are of the opinion that harappan society had no rulers and that everybody enjoyed equal status then uh, some other arguments is that a single state uh, given in the similarity in artifacts the evidence of plant settlements standardized ratio of brick size etc shows that there was a uh, state authority or a central authority so what brought in the civilization to an end for example by uh, 
most of the mature harappan sites in the region had was abandoned and as on on the simultaneously there was expansion of population into new settlements in gujarat haryana western uttar pradesh etc so there was a transformation of material culture happening the urban urban way of life uh, give right uh, was declined the artifacts and settlements that emerge later indicate a rural way of life okay so that's why we call it as a decline because there was a shift from urban to rural uh, what brought about these changes there are several explanations like climate change deforestation excessive flood so there are different interpretations whatever the uh, explanations are it appears that a strong unifying element might have came to an end that is the loss of authority of the harappan state uh, because uh, it is evidenced by the disappearance of seals distinctive beads and pottery shift from standardized weight system to use of local weights so these things indicates that the state might have come to an end so first urbanization came to an end uh, so next uh, the discussion is about how the urban, uh, the sites were discovered what was the archaeological attempts that is not so relevant you can skip those section and you can uh, if you are interested you can read but otherwise there is nothing much to learn for the exam uh, then the important idea is the problem of interpretation how to interpret uh, different symbols or uh, ar artifacts that were discovered from in this valley how to interpret it we will learn more about these kind of things in the fine arts ncrt that we will discuss later but what you need to learn from here is certain terms that will be relevant for further discussion like the mother goddess from where it was found and what is its uh, significance this we will discuss in the fine arts ncrt then the great bath fire altars of kalibangan and lothal then the uh, proto shiva okay uh, the discussion on proto shiva and it, there are different uh, ideas about this proto shiva what is it so when a seal look like a proto shiva that is a uh, guy sitting in a meditative meditation posture then in rudra is the god name given in rigveda Uh, it but it does not mention anything about being a yogi so it is wrong to relate the harappan seal to shiva this is the basic argument here you can uh, read on your own and we will learn about all of this in the uh, ncrt of fine arts so uh, we will have further elaborate discussion there so this is all what this chapter is about hope you enjoyed thank you you can go through the timeline to understand what are the these time period refers to okay and also there is a timeline involving the major developments in harappan archaeology so these names are important alexander cunningham mortimer wheeler etc you just have familiarity with with these names that's it and nothing more to learn for the exam So this is all about this discussion thank you